Steve Peichel had a busy offseason bringing in nine newcomers with the 68th best transfer class, the 4th best freshman class, and the 9th best overall class in the entire country. I'm going to break down the film of all nine including the star-studded freshman duo at the end of the video. Lathan Somerville is a 6'9 freshman power forward that played at Richwoods High School in Illinois. He averaged 26.3 points, 14.4 rebounds, 4.2 blocks, and 4.1 assists per game. He is a strong player that plays closer to a big guard. He had a lot of guard skills and I think he hit a late growth spurt, so played guard for a lot of his life. He really showed the ability to put the ball on the ground and I think he, although he did probably force a little bit of the drives, there's a lot of bigs that he was quite simply able to just take off the dribble, get in the paint, get to a layup. I do also like the ability in the post. He has pretty good footwork which makes sense, but he also has great strength to just be able to physically move a guy. On top of all that though, he has really good passing, so he can pass from the post, he can pass from the top of the key. He has really, really good vision to go along with the scoring outputs. Now, he shot a lot of jumpers in high school, and I'm a little bit concerned about it translating. It is a super, super high arcing shot, and I, I'm just concerned about it translating, but there is a chance that it definitely can. I think he has some upside protecting the rim. It isn't definitely his strength to me. He's not the most athletic, but his strength should allow him to kind of hold up down low. But he just has some pretty unique tools at his size that's going to be fun to watch. All right, so in this clip, I want to look at Somerville's ability to drive, take the big off the dribble, get in the paint, and then score. This is going to be him right here at the top of the key. So he's going to get the ball swung to him, and then eventually he's going to kind of flow into what is a handoff, but he's going to eventually keep it. So as that happens, now it's just going to turn into a little bit of ISO. At his size, now he has a little bit of like a head of esteem already getting downhill, but then there's good footwork. Gets to the spin. And then from here, I mean, that's good touch. That's an off foot kind of running floater from what, eight feet out or whatever. And he's able to get it to go at his size. It's just not common to see. If you are enjoying, please like and subscribe and comment who will be the best out of this group next season. PJ Hayes is a six foot six, fifth year forward transferring from San Diego. He averaged 10.5 points, 3.1 rebounds, 1.1 assists, and shot 39.7% from three on nearly six attempts per game. And that's pretty much where we're going to start is he is a shooter. He is, he is a shooter. He's a guy that is going to space out on the perimeter a ton and just put up shots from there. He t attempted 167 threes last year and only 59 twos. He's mainly a catch and shoot guy. He isn't going to be a guy that you run a ton of on ball action for and even off ball isn't the, his strong suit, but he does have success kind of shooting off ball off pin downs if needed. But more than anything, he can be a guy that can space out on the perimeter in the corner and just bring spacing to the offense. He can be a pick and pop guy, and I'm interested to see how he's used there. He was over 50% from three on open catch and shoot looks last season. Now, he doesn't get to the rim a ton, but he can convert there. Mainly, this is just going to be off cuts, especially if he is being overplayed as a perimeter guy. Like I said, he's not going to be a guy that's going to self-create much, but... He's going to be a shooter. Defensively, I think he's fine. He's going to be pretty good against most threes or fours. He's going to struggle against quicker threes or strong fours, but overall, he'll be able to be fine. And he's a guy that just kind of makes winning plays, provides good spacing, and is a very needed piece for Rutgers. All right, so on this play, we are going to look at the shooting from Hayes. This is going to be him right here. He's kind of setting the screen. And so from there, he's going to work his way back up to the top. So he's setting a back screen right here now, which is kind of just part of San Diego's offense. And now as he flows to the top, it's a really good action, honestly. He's, you know, that sets that a first screen. Now he's flowing into this back screen, so that's occupying his defender. And then immediately after that, he's going to flow into a handoff. And so now there's confusion defensively, whether it's a switch or not. And he gets a little bit of space, and that's all he needs. Off of this little bit of movement, getting the handoff, getting the look that he wants right there. Jordan Durkak is a six foot five junior wing transferring from Merrimack. He averaged 17 points, 3.9 assists, 6.0 rebounds, 2.1 steals per game last season, and was the NEC player of the year. He is a guy that just has a very, very good feel for the game. Really high IQ player that's really able to kind of do a bit of everything. He was tasked with a ton last year, but also did a ton. Really, really good driver, and that's probably his best attribute offensively, is his ability to get downhill, convert in the paints, at the rim especially. His jumper hasn't been good, and that is a concern with how it fits into the offense. He's been below 30% from three on both seasons of his career. He kind of has like the Marcus Damas booty balls type to him, where he can kind of just back his guy down from the perimeter, get all the way to the rim. Now, obviously, we do have to see it translate to the Big Ten. It is a big jump from the NEC. 
He's a really good facilitator with great feel. He was number 115th in the country last year in assist rate, and although he was tasked with a lot, he was still able to produce a lot. He doesn't, I don't think he processes the game super quickly, which could be a little bit concerning at a faster paced Big Ten level, but like I said, very good overall feel, and I think the defense is generally good. It is kind of tough to tell because of the zone defense that they played, but I think he should be fine on that end. So on this play, I want to look at Dirk Hack being able to just kind of go booty ball, get his way to the rim, into the paint. And like I said, that's where he wants to go to a lot is in the paint and at the rim. So he's going to be the one who catches it right here. And so he's just, as he's backing his guy down, you can see how much space he has. Uh, Merrimack does a good job of kind of decoy action, creating the space for him. And he's, you know, six foot five, 205 pounds. So he moves well, has good size that he's able to do this. And although it isn't always posting up from the three point line, he does a good job of just getting in this area in general where he can also facilitate, but this time gets the fall away to go. Dylan Grant is a six foot seven freshman forward that last played at Michigan Collegiate in Michigan. He averaged 15 points and 6.6 .6 rebounds per game in AAU. He is a very, very athletic forward that moves really well and that just brings a ton of defensive upside to him. He can play above the rim, and he's honestly pretty fast with even with the ball in his hands. I think he's a pike cool guy more than anything. He is a guy that has a ton of defensive upside. He is can help kind of protect the rim as a roamer, maybe not a stationary rim protector, but rotating from the weak side. I trust the perimeter defense. I think he moves pretty well out there, and so he has this potential to kind of be a guy that can guard twos, threes, fours if everything breaks right. I think best thing offensively that's going to translate is the cutting. He uses his athleticism, his ability to finish above the rim, just using that off ball to be able to generate looks. I think he has potential in both shooting and drives, but it's going to be things that he needs to improve on in order to really be effective with them at the next level. All right, so on this play right here, I want to look at Grant's ability to drive, get downhill. It's going to be him right here with the ball in his hands. And so as he gets it, now it's just going to be kind of a one-on-one -on -one ISO. So he's going to be him up here. And he does a good job, right? There's going to either be like a handoff or a screen here. Defender slightly overplays. So now he's just going to jab step and then get down to the middle. Really good spin move there. And that's where the upside comes from is like just that this athleticism and body control to be able to spin there, get past the defense and now rise above with pretty good touch around the rim that he showed right there. Zach Martini is a six foot seven fifth year forward transferring from Princeton. He averaged 8.4 points, 3.3 rebounds, and shot 38.5% from three on five and a half attempts per game. Similar to Hayes, he is a shooter and he is going to shoot a lot of threes. He was 37.3% from three last season per Ken Palm, 38.5% overall. So like he could just really shoot the ball and he had a big jump last year into it. He played small ball five last year a lot for Princeton at six foot seven. So how does he fit in defensively is going to be interesting. Does Rutgers try to throw him as kind of the small ball five and they figure out defensively? I think more naturally he is a four. Now he can be a pick and pop guy. He isn't going to be a guy that's going to create off the dribble too much, but he can be an elite spacer. He took only 35 twos last year and 153 threes. So again, similar to Hayes, he's just going to be a guy that is often going to be spaced out on the perimeter in the corners and just giving the spacing the offense needs. So on this play, we're going to look at Martini's pick and pop ability, which is something I am interested to see how it is used for Rutgers. So it's going to be him with the ball right here, flowing into this handoff, setting up the screen. And so he is six foot seven. He is pretty well built, which maybe lends to him being a little bit better defensively at the Big Ten level. Defenders in drop coverage looking for him. You can see him pointing. He's pointing for a late switch. It's not going to happen. And you just cannot give him this much space at all to shoot. We'll look at the form kind of in full speed right here. So he's able to knock this one down. Bryce Dorch is a six foot eight freshman forward that played at Brimmer May in Massachusetts last season. He averaged 13.2 points and 9.2 rebounds per game during AAU. I think he is going to be a guy that will need time to develop. This is a big freshman class and he feels like the guy that's probably going to need the most time to develop, which isn't always a bad thing. He's a pretty interesting forward that is fast and has athletic upside. He's also very comfortable taking bigs off the dribble. Now in high school, he played like the center position, but he feels like a more like a three or a four at the Big Ten level. The drives that he did have was definitely more of kind of a straight line drive, like I'm going to be faster than you and get all the way to the rim. He has interesting upside defensively. He has really good hands and instincts, but I don't think he's like that quick east to west. He's more fast than he is quick. 
but used correctly could be a guy I think that gets a ton of deflection, maybe even can help out near the rim. I think there is a lot of work to do with the jumper, but like I said, I think he's going to have the time to develop. So on this play right here, we're going to look at Dorch being able to get downhill near the rim in the paints. So as the play develops, it's going to be him right here getting the ball at the top of the key. And this was just basically an ISO. This was designed to be in isolation and let Dorch cook, especially against centers that he kind of had to go up against. And so now as he gets it here, I mean, you can see the space he has. And I think that's a big thing for him, too, is if he can generate a little bit of steam ahead of time, that's going to be big for him being able to create separation later. Really good crossover right there. And now, I mean, from there, it's just takeoff and super athletic can play above the rim right there. Does a great job. Tyson Acuff is a six foot four fifth year combo guard who played at Eastern Michigan last season. He averaged 21.7 points, 3.6 rebounds, and 2.8 assists per game in 38 minutes a game. He's a combo guard that really wants to get in the mid-range area, and he was a very, very high volume score. He had pretty good efficiency from two, the three struggled, but he's very, very comfortable on floaters and getting in the mid-range. And so when he ran a lot of pick and rolls and a lot of handoffs last year as the go-to guy, he could be a legit three-level scorer, but like I said, prefers getting to the rim or the mid-range. Not crazy explosive in terms of a first step or anything, but he does a really good job of kind of keeping the defenders on his hips, creating space that way kind of through change of pace. He can facilitate, and he definitely has pretty good passing, but he is more of a score first guard to me. I think the defense is fine. He moves fairly well, not elite, but he's not going to get like torched on that end. But he can be a guy you can just go ahead and give the ball and just say, hey, go create a shot. And he's going to go and at least at minimum get two feet in the paint. So on this play right here, I'm going to look at Acuff's ability in pick and roll, getting to the mid range that he does so well. It's going to be him with the ball at the top of the key. Eastern Michigan is going to be in a horn set. So two kind of at the elbow extended, two guys in the corners. And then he's just going to pick where he wants to go off. And so once he comes off this way, like I said, that like that part right there, it's not like he's like crazy fast or anything, but he knows he has this defender going to be trailing. He has this big in drop coverage who's going to be kind of moving back this way. So knowing all that, that's why he creates this kind of contact right there, push the defender back a little bit. And so now as he gets to the mid range area, he can just kind of rise up, get a good look and knock it down. And now it is time. Ace Bailey is a six foot eight freshman wing who played at McEachern High School in Georgia last season. He averaged 33.4 points, 15.5 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and 2.1 blocks per game. It is incredibly, incredibly rare to find this kind of combination of shot making and athleticism, especially as a freshman coming into college. He is a guy that quite literally at list, I think he's listed at six foot 10 now, can quite literally get to any shot that he wants. He has a really, really smooth jumper that can just rise up over anybody, whether it be off of catch and shoot looks, pull ups, and he is a great pull up shooter. He is a guy that you give the ball and you just say, hey, go get us a bucket and he's going to. Now, I think there is a little concern with the shot selection. He was tasked with pretty much everything at high school, so maybe that's part of it, but the shot selection will have to be a little bit better. He definitely settles a lot, especially for his size, just kind of choosing to rather get to the jumper than try to put pressure on the defense. And he does convert really well at the rim, so he just doesn't get there a ton. Super, super athletic, can definitely play above the rim. I'm interested in him, in him as a rim protector, and Rutgers might need it from him. Kind of this smallish ball five where he's kind of tasked with roaming around the, the paints and helping protect the rim. He's so athletic, and he moves so well that there's so much upside defensively. And then you combine that with his elite offensive game, and that's why he's a projected top five pick. So we're going to look at his shot making ability. It was tough to pick which clip just because there's so many to choose from with him. This is going to be him with the ball at the top of the key. Super lanky, super athletic, and still able to have a good handle. And then from here, it's just going to be an ISO. So it's quite literally just going to be one on one. I'm going to score and you can't really do anything about it. So right there, crossover, cross back, loses it a bit, which I do think the handle might need to tighten up just a bit, but it doesn't matter. He, get, he keeps his composure. This is honestly good defense, but it just doesn't matter. Now he's able to get to a 15 foot fadeaway, rise up over the top, get the good bounce with the soft touch. It just didn't really matter what the defense did. Dylan Harper is a six foot six freshman combo guard who played at Don Bosco in New Jersey. He averaged 22.4 points, 5.7 rebounds, 2.7 assists, and 1.4 steals per game. He is a legit, legit three level score. 
He is a bigger body guard that runs points and I would expect to run point at some point this season. Very, very comfortable in pick and roll. Never really gets rushed, never really gets sped up. He just kind of finds his spot and he never really gets pushed off his spots either. He can get to the rim pretty much whenever he wants given his combination of speed and size getting downhill. Now I think sometimes he does force into traffic and that's when he gets caught below the rim. He has good athleticism but probably not elite athleticism and so when he drives into traffic sometimes he does get kind of caught below the rim. He, I really, really buy the passing with him. I think he reads the floor really, really well and will probably be one of the better passing point guards by the end of the season. He also has really good defensive upside. Now, I think the one concern is if he has to go up against quicker guards, but at Rutgers, they'll probably be able to mask that a bit. He can make any three that he desires, but I think the shooting will also need a little bit more consistency at the next level. But he is just so smooth and polished in so many aspects, whether it be passing, getting into the lane, even defense. Like He just understands, he reads the game well, and he's just going to be such a fun player to watch. So on this play right here, we're going to look at Harper's ability to get to the rim. And like Ace Bailey, there was just so many clips to pick from. So Harper's going to have the ball right here at uh, kind of the top of the key left wing. Pick and roll. And so, I mean, right here, it's, he can just kind of see that he was sizing up the defense. So as he's coming off, he's reading the defense. Okay, low man's here. There's defense right here against the post. And so now, as soon as he knows the defense is going to kind of slip back, he's just going to take off. So he has this defender. He knows it's going to be on his hip eventually. And this is where, I mean, there's so much athleticism. That's Ace Bailey right there trying to defend. Like, there's just, there's a lot of people right here and it doesn't matter he has good strength good body control pretty good athleticism and then really great touch around the rim that he's just kind of able to glide and then finish there if you enjoyed please like and subscribe and click here for the oregon's newcomers breakdown